Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, January 25th, and I'm back for a quick um, weekly stitching update. And first off, since I have this ready in front of me, I will do my giveaway. Um, this is the chart number seven of the Prim Stitch series by the Fat Quarter Shop um, by Lori Holt. This is called Faith and Endurance, and it has a nice church and some flowers and a bird. This is a series that's based on a quilt that is also maybe called Prim Stitch. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> um, so I offered this up for people last week and let's do our random comment picker. There were 42 unique comments with the word faith last week. So I will do start and see who wins. Amy Saniva, faith is what got me through last year. So true. <laughs> that was a, a common theme in all of the comments. Um, a lot of you said something about faith um, tiding us over and getting us through, and that's what holds us up during this weird, crazy time that we have. So Amy Saniva, you won. So get me your mailing address, stitchinmommy7 at gmail.com and I'll try to get that out to you soon. And congratulations. So that's always fun to pass to pass these on to those of you who would also like to stitch them. I actually worked on my Prim Stitch series a little bit this week. We had a few, um, a few moments in front of the TV with Simpsons and BattleBots and whatnot. I'm still working on number six, which is Home and Hearth. I do have a little bit of progress to show more than like three or four lines of house, which is what all I had last time. <laughs> so here is where I'm at now compared to last week. This is 25 count prim vintage cloth. One, I'm doing mine one over one and I will be adding specialty stitches, although I haven't yet. So far, everything is just cross stitch. So I finished this, I finished the main house colors and then I added the red doors and chimneys came up here and did the moon. And this color was also down here in the vase for the handles. The rest of the vase, I think I'll be doing specialty stitches. And I will be doing specialty stitches inside these stars. That may be all I will do. And I'm just uh, not feeling creative right now. <laughs> Maybe on the next one, I'll get a little more creative. But I just started a few half stitches there. I'm about to fill in the windows. But that's all I managed to do this morning in the grocery pickup um, in my parking space because they were really fast. <laughs> so can't complain about that. While I have this out, I will share my temperature typography, which is my 2021 temperature design that I'm working on. And there are lots of these various designs in my shop and I'm seeing them pop up uh, by other designers too in different themes. And it's really fun to see that. So they're all really fun. Here is where I'm at right now. This is on 28 count pale blue even weave of some kind. I'm not exactly sure because it was gifted to me. I don't know exactly what this is. Um, but here is my January so far. It's, it got warm into the low 80s and then cooled off again and I will be getting some purples in the next letter. So woohoo, that's exciting. And actually the next day on here, which was Saturday, I think, was actually for a high of 49, which is my lowest color um, on my hot hot symbol key that I use here in Southern California. So that's exciting. I'll actually get to my lowest color. <clears throat> and I think the rest of the, the, the next few days here, today it looks nicer, but yesterday was probably pretty cold too. I think this whole week is supposed to be um, off and on rainy and whatnot. So that should give us some nice, winter colors on my pattern before it gets warm again. So that was my travel stitching. And I also had some happy mail, some stitchy kindness, I guess you could say. I was contacted a little while back by oh, Francine, and here's a beautiful card she sent me. So fun. I love that, very pretty with a sweet note inside and she knew I liked to make needle minders out of wooden buttons and had a whole bunch of 
wooden buttons that she wanted to pass on to me and they're perfect. <laughs> so there's a bunch of them in here. And there's actually two baggies, two baggies worth of wooden buttons and all different varieties. What's this big one? I didn't even, I haven't gotten them all out yet. There's like a scene on that one. There's animals and little like Paris. So many, and they're they're just perfect. They're that's cute. They're um, I like the flowers. They're tiny and perfect, which is just what I like for my projects because I have stitching in hand. I don't want them to be too heavy, so wooden buttons are perfect for that. They're very light, and then also a lot of my designs. For example, um, this one is in a very small tube. I forget what kind of, this might have been like a really small, um, like when you get the really short things of wrapping paper, I think it might have been a tube from that. And they're really tiny. And this is my 40 count fabric all rolled up in here. I can't get a very big needle minder on here. So these, this is a button, a vintage button from my husband's grandma that I'm using on that right now. But some needle minders are just too big for these. And they, I have other, like this is like a paper towel roll. So it is bigger. Um, so bigger buttons, bigger needle minders can fit on this one, on something in a tube like this. But um, it is nice to have the small ones because then I, it's more versatile for where I can keep it. So that's wonderful. And she also sent a couple that were already made into needle minders. The Paris one and these cute little owls. So fun. I have my owl family and they actually have fabric covered buttons on the, the other magnets. So that's really fun. Um... My owl family might need that. <laughs> I don't remember what needle minder I have on there right now, but I might need to switch some out for ones that are more appropriate. So thank you so much. That was really exciting to receive in the mail. It was coming from Canada. So we had talked a while back and I hadn't heard anything. So it was very much a surprise when it finally showed up. I was like, oh yeah, that's really fun. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I'm excited about that. I, I'm running out of magnets, so that's my next thing. I need to buy more magnets if I'm gonna put those, make those into needle minders. Um, so what did I work on this week, you're asking? Why don't we, let's see, let's do my iris first, I guess, because, um, that showed up here in my front. It's all the progress that I made, um, so far this month, so that's fun. There's a gap here for Mill Hill Monday, and then I actually skipped on Sunday also because I was stitching two letters on my typography took longer than I thought since I didn't, I, we drove separately to church on Sunday this week. And so I didn't get to stitch in the car. And so I just figured, well, I'd rather get caught up on my typography. My iris is probably a little bit ahead. So I was okay skipping a day. Um, but because there have been a lot of days when I work on this that my goal is to have an average of 65 stitches a day to be able to get as far as I want to for the Full Coverage Fanatics 21,000 stitches in 2021. And um, this is this one, Heaven and Earth Designs Quick Stitch Iris, in case you forgot or are new. Um, but usually lately I've been finishing my string. So then I get like, it depends. Sometimes depending on the section and depending on how long the string is, it will be more or less, but sometimes it's it's in the 70s and even 80s of how many stitches I get. So I am, um, I do think I have a good, a good buffer. So I was okay not stitching on this yesterday, but here this is <clears throat> this week after about, I guess, five days of progress. So this is also 25 count. This is white linen, probably maybe even weave. I, I actually don't know. Um, and I'm continuing to work from the top down, filling things in. So I think I filled in some more of this flower and I think I filled in some more here, maybe some things in the middle here. I don't, 
sometimes I don't remember it because I work on this so much I don't really remember what I'm doing from week to week so hopefully it's just clear <laughs> in the before and after pictures what's what's going on I do love working on this and um it's it's a joy to pull out every single time I do every day um and even the days that I am choosing now once one day a week to one day every month to work on it for the whole day as my focus piece that day I don't get tired of it even then so this is like the perfect project for working on every day um because it's just fun it's really soothing colors um 25 count one over one is not bulky and it, it also covers pretty well because there's not any super dark colors in that pattern so it's just right and the amount of confetti to block stitching is a nice balance in that piece so thumbs up if you're thinking about it get it <laughs> You'll, you won't regret it um yeah so that's i've been working on that off and on all week my focus pieces first off were my was my oldest whip for a birthday challenge in one of my groups and so this is my what i'm considering my oldest whip because i don't actually know but i think it probably is this is stitch on kit fabric, kit floss, and I'm pretty happy with how far I got. So I worked on this on Tuesday. And here this is compared to last time. This is the 14 count, probably antique white Ada that came with the kit. And I had a good time on this. This was an interesting one. So I'll tell you first what I did. So I finished the border down to, to go around the corner and then I went came around the corner on this side too. And then I decided to work on the pink in this ribbon, which is following this, uh, the end of this ribbon um, over here. And it'll turn purple and kind of go around here. And so once that ribbon's done, then I'll, then I'll focus on that boot. I think that's kind of what I'm gonna do. There's also some more in the border. There's a, a light gray, almost white, not quite white, in the fill in the checkerboard and it's backstitched. And then there's like a gold cord that hangs this bow up. So. When I bring this out each time, I'll probably do a little bit more on the border as well as some stuff in here if I have time for both because it's nice to chip away at the border because it's pretty monotonous, um, but also do some fun colorful things as well. So this one, we had the power go out on Tuesday um, evening while I was working on this. So I was really happy that it's a 14 count Ada project because <laughs> then it was really easy to see in dim lighting I have one of those around the neck lights with two little lights on each side. So I was using that um, and we had some emergency lanterns and whatnot, um, but I was glad it wasn't one of my 40 count pieces because that would have been a little bit harder <laughs> to work on when the power was out. So I did this, it was off for about an hour and a half. So it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. So that was one day of progress on that one. And then what, I, what did I do next? Then I worked on Empress Eugenie for two days. I worked on this for a few different challenges. Um, the main ones, these next couple are for, were for my bingo. I think I have everything crossed off now. So here's my bingo now. You can see the red or the pink X's um, are things I've finished. And so I have a bingo right here. And not that way. I think that's my, oh, and up and down. I have this one. So two bingos so far. I'm going for a blackout and my goal on each piece is one day of progress. So on each square. There are not 25 different projects because I am doubling up um, some of them, but I just have a few more. So after this week, I will have a blackout. So that's exciting. Empress Eugenie was for um, an outdoor activity and mittens, hats, or sweaters. Mittens scarves, hats, or sweaters. And there is one straw hat that one of the ladies has, or is holding anyways. Here it is. So this is a cover picture. They are outside, sitting around, chit-chatting, getting their painting painted. <laughs> and here's the straw hat. So I used it for both of those, but I am up here. I am cropping off the top two columns of background, which and one column over here. So that actually takes out 25% of the pattern, um, but I can't be bothered by that. 
I want to go, I want to get to the ladies as soon as possible. And already it's going to take a while because I'm up here in the top corner and it'll be a while before I get to her head. And it'll also be a while if I were to try to go down diagonally to her head. So I'll be in background for a little while, but the sooner I can get to them, the better. So I definitely didn't want to have to do any of that. So this one is on 28 count dove gray Monaco, two over one half stitches. And that means I'm stitching two strands of floss over one fabric thread. And I'm doing a half stitch, which is just basically the first leg of the cross stitch. And that's how far I got. So I think this was a little over 400 stitches. Oh, more than that, 658 half stitches. So that's exciting. More background. <laughs> but progress is progress and eventually we'll get to something fun. So I do like, um, there's hope in these patterns now that I have Pattern Keeper because I can kind of see, I can feel, I feel progress goes a little bit faster now. And so it's not as discouraging to be in the background as it used to be because I know the good stuff's coming and I can see where it is and it's, it's, uh, it won't take too long to get there. Sometimes I jump around a lot, but this one does have a lot of background. So I don't want to ignore, I don't want to ignore it for, for too long. So that one got two days and then I worked on Stitcher's Retreat, which also had some bingo prompts that it fulfilled. This one was two of something, which there's two people and then a cozy spot, which knitting together or cross stitching together by lamplight seems pretty cozy to me. My stitching spot is cozy, so I'm sure theirs is too. This one's also two over one half stitches. This is Rose Monaco. And here is where I got to put it up here and have a I decided to do um some in their hair I did that dark red color you can see it mostly on her through here her face is right here a lot of her light tones in her face are also in the background near this lamp so it was hard to know what exactly to pick there's also some red in her and then I decided to come up the second day and start in on the background because there is background on here that I need to get done too. It'll be dark over here on the side and then it gets lighter where because the lamp is right in the middle. So um, that dark, the first dark color also got a couple stitches in her head that it's hard to see where they are. And then a couple here because it was a really dark green. So I did a little bit down here in the shadows of her dress and then it'll be around the back of her um, down her back as well. So I just did that until the string ran out. So it's kind of what I like to do. I don't want to have to put the string back. I'll just keep going somewhere wherever it, wherever I can find stitches and put them in. So that was fun. That one got 410 stitches over the course of two days. So that was nice. All right. Oh, and this is a cute little button that I, I don't remember where I got this. I think I might've just bought it because I like these uh, tall Victorian shoe boots. And so I made that into a needle minder. One of the first ones I made myself. Um, and then last night I worked on Dragon Ride for my son. This one was not for any prompts. It was just for fun. So that was actually kind of relaxing. I have no idea how many stitches I did. Um, and I actually pulled it out and he, while he was still awake, I said, so where do you want me to focus? I'm going to work on the dragon this time. Where do you want me to focus? And he asked to focus on the neck area. And so I have, I've had the face done and backstitched for a little while. So I ended up working on this purple part and then some filling in some along the neck. So it actually looks really cool now. So here it is now, um, 28 count light blue even weave by MCG Textiles, mostly two over two. And the dragon part that I did yesterday was two over two. The man in the middle is one over one. So I thought 
that was a lot of fun to work on. And over two stitches tend to um, fills up the space faster than I am used to because I'm used to stitching one over one so much. So it made it go pretty quick. And so I filled in this purple part. There will be some back stitching in here, but I didn't get to that yet. Um, and I filled in some of these, these blues and some of these, like this one and some of these purples came down here as well. Um, oh, and a little bit up here just to finish my string. And I have um, one of the blue teal colors that's, um, um, I think I filled it in here and then, yeah, I, I did all of this with it, but then it's still on my needle, so I'll do more of this down here probably when I come back to it. And so I really like that. That turned out really nice. Sometimes um, you're just in the mood for big stitches. <laughs> and it goes pretty fast. I feel like that with Mirabilia's um, as well, since I work on those two over two, um, on 32 count usually, that I feel like the space is so big and it's gonna take forever and then I get working on it and it fills in a lot faster than I expected just because the two over two stitches, it's like it, you cover four times as much ground with one stitch as compared to one over one, one, over one. Um, which is also why I don't like choosing one over one skin on my fancy ladies when I don't have to because <laughs> that's four times as work when it's not necessary um anyways that's neither here nor there um I am planning a little bit of February stitching because some of some challenges have come out uh for the various prompts and like birthday sales and things so I am starting to plan a little bit for for February but I'm not 100% sure everything. One thing since we were talking about fancy ladies and mirabilias I will be working on garden prelude again in February because um, it's Belinda Ozzy Stitcher's birthday in February so she's in one of the groups I'm in and her birthday uh, the prompt she wanted for her birthday stitch along challenge thing was to work on something that was a previous birthday start for either you or somebody else that you started for a birthday. Um, there were a few different ones I thought of, but then since she also likes stitching Mirabilia's, I thought it was perfect to do my last birthday start, which is Garden Prelude, and I could work on a Mirabilia and a birthday start. So I'll be giving that a couple days in February probably. So yeah, so I have other things, but I'm not 100% solidified on them yet, so I will share those later when I know more what's gonna happen. So I will share my plans for this week because I know that much. This is Mill Hill Monday again, so later today I'll be pulling out my Mill Hill kit, buttons and beads. This is my first Mill Hill kit, Winged Monarch, and I love it. It's really pretty. I'm using all the called for kits provided supplies. And this is where I'm at right now on the perforated paper with the called with everything the kit came in, came with the threads and eventually beads but I'm doing the stitching first so I will be continuing on with these flowers um probably two or three lengths of thread so that's fun I look forward I'm looking forward to that like every Monday I look forward to that that's fun so yay and then my main piece this week or today and tomorrow will be bear time stories and I'm doing this for my, for bingo, for the bingo prompts, an animal from the Chinese calendar and dragons, which is also the same thing pretty much, um, because dragons are on the Chinese calendar. So this is basically for two, two prompts because of the dragons. So this is mini bear time stories by Randall Spangler and Heaven and Earth Designs, two little baby dragons um, sitting with a teddy bear reading them a story. So. And I, there's another prompt um, in the challenge group that I'm going to use this for something with food. And they have a cookie right here. So I'm hoping, like I've been stitching this extreme cross country, one color at a time. Um, but you get bonus points in that one if you work on the actual item of food. So I may um, do a little bit on that cookie too, even though it won't be the same color I've been working on so far. So here is where I'm starting at. And this is the first color I start. I picked ended up being all over the design. So I went ahead and just kept going. And so this is 
not all of that color, but a good chunk of it. Like, the top half is pretty much done in that color, and there's still some more on the bottom. So I'll probably work more in that color, but I'll also pick up some, probably right about here is the cookie. So I'll probably do some cookie too, because <laughs> why not? It's fun. Um, so this is 40 count Bertle, and I'm doing these one over one half stitches, one strand half stitches. So pretty small. But I was happy that I could get all the way around the piece without carrying, without having to count too far. And so that makes it, it's going to be really fun to have that structure and then I can fill in colors or do specific areas pretty easy. So that is the one I'll be working on the next couple days. And then I'll work on La Soiree for some more bingo prompts. This one is for using uh, DMC white. You had to use either Blanc or B5200. And surprisingly, a lot of the ones that I had picked for other challenge, other reasons this month didn't use that color. So it was kind of surprising. And this one only has it in a blend. It's not by itself, but it is in there in a blend. So I chose to use this one and I'm not sure if I'm anywhere near using that color it there may be something in this uh stripe of the wallpaper which is where i'm at so if possible i'll use that color um otherwise i'll just say it's in there because <laughs> i'm sure some of these bright spots will have it in the blend um and i'll i'm also using this for sparkly gemstones because you can see like there's there's um it's really kind of hard to see but like she has a necklace on her there's bracelets, there's like hair ribbons and various things. So I think in person, those things would be sparkly and probably have some gemstones on them. So that's what I'm going with there. And this is on 24 count Congress cloth, which is a very stiff canvas. I'm doing this two over one half stitches as well. And so here is where I'm at now. Likely I will um, be working in the parked threads as much as possible. And then again, if some of these have some white in them, I'll do that for sure and maybe pull something new if it has a white blend in it. Because um, I do like to work on the, the item for the prompt as much as possible if, if it's doable. So that's my start. And so I am working in the background still. This is wallpaper and this will be the paneling right here. And I think the first lady's head is like over here. So that's pretty cool. It'll be fun. It'll be fun to get over there. <clears throat> I'm not sure how long it'll take to get there, but soon. <clears throat> so that'll get two days as well. And then my last full coverage piece for bingo is April Fairy. This one I'm doing for a design with the letter A. I think it was a design with J, A, or N for January. And so this is April Fairy. So this is my Quick Stitch April Fairy, also by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I'm also working on this for something that flies because there's butterflies in here. Although again, I'm not working on the actual butterfly this time because of the method of stitching that I'm doing. This is on the same Rose Monaco I did the Stitcher's Retreat on, but it is a, I want it to stay pink. It is um, full crosses, one over one full crosses. It keeps, keeps washing out, but I guess I'll just come up here and show you anyways. Um, so I'll just keep going down that diagonal. I am still enjoying the parking diagonal method on this, on this particular piece um, because of the way I'm doing it. It's a unique experiment and I'm enjoying it. So this is the one piece I will keep parking on. So I'll give that two days also. And then that brings us to the weekend. And I still have my husband's piece that I haven't worked on yet in January. So I will work on that for two days for January and February. So I'll work on it Sunday and Monday, the 31st and the first so it'll work for I'll get it out once and work on it for two days for and it'll count for both months so this is my Simpsons piece that I'm working on 
Um, this is also on 40 count vertical, one over one half stitches. Only I'm not doing the white background, so it is not full coverage. It was originally charted to be full coverage, but I'm not doing the white around the outside, nor the white in the middle of the circle. I am doing the white around the paper edge that they punched out of because it's not 100% white. It's got like four different colors in there. So it's got some texture and um, it's a design element. So I am doing that ring of paper that they're busting out of. So this is where I'm starting. I have some olive green, like random outline, an outline confetti color on my needle. So I'll probably see where I can put that some more um, before moving on to some more colors. I like to work on a little bit of confetti outline stitches as well as solid fill-in because it helps you see what I did. If I only work on confetti outline stitches, not only do I not get very many stitches in during that time, um, but I also have a hard time showing you what I've accomplished. So I'd like to do a little bit of both because the outline stitches, the confetti stitches need to happen at some point and eventually it'll be really cool to have it all finished. Um, but while they're slowly confetti, you know, growing in one stitch here, one stitch there, it's not as noticeable nor is it as fun to look at. So, so I will probably, if I come back when I usually do on Monday next week, that will be in the, in between. Um, my work on that piece so I may or may not show it next week and maybe I'll sh I probably will if I come back on Monday I'll probably show you but then I'll work on it again one more time so that's the way that goes so I think that's everything um, that I have to share with you so it was a pretty good stitchy week and I'm happy with everything that I got done and I'm excited to see this week coming up. And I am, it is fun to plan, um, to start thinking about February and to think about some things that I want to start and some things that I haven't got a chance to, to work on lately. Um, like with this full coverage bingo, it's been a lot of full coverage. So I'm thinking of pulling out, I might pull out Winter Queen again um, and Winter Wonderland Band Sampler because those are some winter pieces. While it's still February, I wanna get those worked on um, a little bit more. So some things like that I'm trying to trying to fit in. Um, but I do get, I was telling somebody in a, I think an Instagram comment maybe, um, I do get wooed <laughs> by all the challenge prompts. There's something about them that just calls to me and says, you must do me, you must figure out the challenge and make your projects work and, and follow this. So. If I don't look at it, I won't be tempted to do it, but it is fun. I enjoy it, so might as well. As long as it's fun, I'll keep doing it. All these challenges. So um, <clears throat> I think that's everything. So hopefully this was enjoyable for you, and I hope you're having a wonderful week. Enjoy the rest of your January, and happy stitching. Bye.